Yes, folks, as you guys heard, Ghostbusters is coming to both Orlando and Hollywood. Today, I'm joined with my co-host, Eddie from Eddietainment. Uh, we are back with another episode of East versus West. It's been about two months, and we want to get back. We have a lot of news to share. We have a lot to talk about. But first and foremost, let's talk about that new Ghostbusters maze. Eddie, uh, let's talk a little bit about your thoughts. What do you think of the maze so far? So, first and foremost, I feel like we haven't talked to these guys in forever, man, so... Whoever tuned in, uh, I just want to thank you for tuning in and being patient. But the announcements are here, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so, and as far as Ghostbusters goes, um, I'm excited. But at the same time, I, I see a lot of different things from uh, a media perspective as far as like when I first kind of did the, the speculation on this, everybody swore by everything that this wasn't even possible. And now those same people are saying, oh, I knew it. I knew it. I've been saying it all, all along. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, okay, whatever. So there's a lot of, like, hype behind it that I'm not buying into. But I am excited for it. I, I love the movie. Um, and I, I think this is going to be a good house. I, and Well, I'm hoping that it's going to be a good house. But I want to avoid it being, like, Ash versus Evil Dead because I really didn't appreciate that style of house. I, I want it to still have like a true fear factor to it. Like I, I want some good jump scares out there. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to pull off a lot of things in this maze. There's a lot of famous ghosts in this maze, uh, specifically talking about like Slimer. I'm talking about, of course, remember the gargoyle uh, demon kind of ghost looking guys. Uh, those look pretty cool. Um, the, uh, the, the gatekeeper and all them that were in the movie that were possessed they were uh, pretty cool demons stay puff marshmallow man the library ghost there's a lot of ghosts that they can bring to life in this movie that i'm very excited to see hopefully that they do and they have confirmed that stay puff marshmallow and slimer are both going to be in the maze so i'm so excited to see what we're going to see um if we're going to see the hearse i want to see the hearse and stuff like that um there's just a lot of stuff that I really want to see in this maze. Uh, we're going to see, of course, the Ghostbusters, or are you going to be playing the role of the Ghostbusters as you walk through the maze? Hear a lot of famous quotes. Um, is it going to be? Is it going to be a bomb though? Because this is the end. Did come to uh, Halloween Horror Nights one year. Wasn't exactly a very successful maze. It was a good design and everything, but the maze part of it wasn't very successful. Um, it was the first time they ever introduced comedy and horror together, and this is like the same thing. Um, Ghostbusters is a horror comedy, uh, another PG com uh, horror movie, by the way, uh, like they did last year with Poltergeist, which was a PG horror movie. And that's a lot. A lot of people's big concern about it was the fact that yes, it's another PG horror movie, and they're introducing it to the event. Is it going to work out as far as horror goes? So I'm excited to see uh, what they have in store. Um, I, I talked to Fractured Compass Productions, and I've talked to Sammy about this, and they've both agreed that uh, what would be a cool aspect to the maze was if it was more of like an interactive maze. So like uh, there's this maze over here out in California at Not Scary Farm that's called Infected uh, Special Ops Zombies. And they give you this gun, and it's a more, it's really interactive major shooting zombies. What would be really cool if, if Universal w was willing to put in the money would be to get these, like, uh, kind of the, the photon blasters that they use to catch the ghost. And it's like an interactive maze where you're, where you're kind of going after the ghost at the same time while they scare you. I feel that'd, be, that'd bring the maze to life, in my opinion. Yeah, that would be crazy, dude. <laughs> I, I haven't even thought it through that far, um, but that sounds kind of amazing. Uh, I need you to make that that maze happen <laughs> i know but uh, um, they need to uh, both coast they need to listen yeah. to this podcast and, and maybe take an idea maybe it might be too late though for budget purposes yeah right 
But what I, what I will say, though, is regardless of what the outcome is once we walk through it, this maze is doing exactly what Stranger Things did last year, and it's bringing a whole new demographic to Halloween Horror Nights. So a lot more exposure, which from a fan point of view, I know that means more crowds, but at the same time, it means uh, more opportunity uh, for growth. You know, the, the more money that Halloween Horror Nights makes, the, the more money that we get to um, to the event that we love so much. So it's, it's going to be a huge positive regardless. I'm really hoping that it ends up being great. Like you said, um, the, what, what house, this is the end, right? Yeah. So to me, something that I felt the same way about was the Ash versus evil dead house that came. I really wasn't a huge fan of it. I mean, it's nice walking through and seeing some scenes play out, but at the end of the day, um, the comedy aspect wasn't, wasn't necessary. I, I could have used a lot more jump scares. And I, for from the Ghostbuster, uh, Ghostbusters perspective, I, I'm open to the comedy aspect of it, but I'm really hoping that they hit it home with some good jump scares and horror in there. Definitely, definitely, yeah. And I, I really want to see, like I said, there's a lot of stuff I want to see in this maze, and I hope they pull through. Not only is this uh, good for, uh, in a way, promotional for the new 2020 film that's coming out uh, next year, uh, which is actually going back to its roots, bringing back the uh, the old crew from like the 1980s and stuff from the original. But this year actually marks the 35th anniversary of Ghostbusters. So for them to do a maze based off the movie that you know launched in 1984, and for it to be the 35th anniversary of this uh, iconic film, um, I think it's kind of cool to celebrate that anniversary with with the live action maze where you can actually walk through the movie and stuff like that. Uh, but on top of that, like I said, this is very good promotional for the uh, upcoming 2020 uh, release that they're going to be doing of the new Ghostbusters movie, which is supposedly supposed to bring back all the original cast members and stuff that are actually still alive. I think there's actually one that died um and i i think it's honestly a, a great promotional um opportunity for i think sony's doing it i'm not i don't know for sure but uh, it's, it's a great promotional opportunity for that as well because people are going to go through this maze and that's going to kind of in a way hype them up for the movie even more because i i can imagine if you're going to go see this movie like a lot of people will honestly bring up this maze like oh my god remember that maze at halloween horror nights that they did this one year that was it was fun or you know, I don't know how it's going to be yet. Uh, it, it all depends on people's reactions. But uh, what's your final final verdict on this on this maze announcement? Um, so overall, I could see nothing but good things coming out of this house coming to to the event. But I'm I'm really hoping they pull it off well. I'm a huge fan of the of the movies, but have a hard time personally just understanding how it's going to translate. But I'm gonna give it an opportunity. I'm gonna stay open minded and go through it. I think it's it's going to do well, but you know, at the moment I'm not 100% sure. Definitely. I think uh I'm the, I'm kind of the same way. I'm going to give it, I'm going to go in with open uh, arms, open just open everything and just kind of uh hope that for the best of this maze. Uh I'm very like I said, I'm a big fan of these of these two movies that came out in the 1980s and I have a lot of faith for this movie, especially with Halloween Horror Nights. They do big production stuff and they sometimes most of the time for me never disappoint. Um, and I'm really excited to see what kind of production value this goes in. Now, if they can only just announce Killer Clowns from Outer Space, because I feel like they're teasing us with it, and it's getting on my nerves. Yeah, actually, I'm surprised. I, so I, I wanted something bigger than Ghostbusters to be announced, and or announced. I, I don't know what's up with me in my English today. But if it would have been Killer Clowns, I actually would have been much more excited um, as far as, like, the, the order that things are being announced. I wanted something really big this time around. Um, they Yeah, they keep on teasing. We have those pictures that leaked from the West Coast, so it's basically a for sure on your end. Yeah. Hopefully it's a for sure on our end as well. Yeah, I, I just want the announcement to come out so we could... I, I think right there they could stop making houses. I'm good. However, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that teaser, though, because I remember uh, an East versus Coast video, you did talk about how... Not a lot of mazes got the same production value as Stranger Things did. I feel like this ma this this announcement video was actually pretty well put together. It teased enough, like it didn't show the ghost, but like you kind of knew what it was. It was filmed in Orlando, which was of course in front of the facade of the original Ghostbusters building, which they have a replica built over there. And um, they run out in front of the the um, of course the the park's entrance, and you see of course the Ghostbusters there, and you hear the infamous hearse and everything. So I feel like it was a really well put together trailer, if you ask me. Oh, no, absolutely. We're kind of circling back around to Ghostbusters. But, yeah, 
Um, this year, as opposed to last year, this year, all the IPs are getting a good trailer. Um, as opposed to last year, some of them got just, you know, clips of different people walking through houses and then clips of the movie and bam. These are all being like really well personalized, even the one for the classic monsters. So yeah, they're, they're doing well on the IP side. All right, let's move over to some Orlando exclusive news. You guys have two mazes that got announced while we were on a little hiatus over here in Hollywood. Um, let's talk a little bit about those mazes. I wanna, I'm going to turn the mic over to you, and I'll just give my opinions about this. But we got, of course, what is it? The, the Depths? Depths oh. of Fear. So, depths of Fear. Yeah, so Depths of Fear is basically um, – I'll read a little bit about it. The The workers of Deep Sea uh, Mining Company have found themselves in a dire situation. They've delivered, they've delved too deep and encountered a, paras- a parasitic race of creatures that turns out to be deadly. Um, so long story short, we got this parasite or creatures uh, well below the, the depths. So depths of fear, hence the name. Um, you know, the, the actual... The promotional poster for it reminds me of that one documentary with the mermaids, the hand that's on there. Yeah. Um, so I, I could imagine some type of like merman or weird creature from the the Black Lagoon type of you know costumes that are going to be going on there. Um, this is the house that everybody was confusing um, from the leaked lineup as a Jaws house, obviously, um, and. I'm interested to see, given the the way that they explain this house, how they pull it off. Because this house, find that oh yeah, a Jaws house is definitely possible, or a Jaws house is n- not even something that we should consider. I, it'd be hard to do a, a Jaws house in a way, only because the majority of that movie takes place out in the ocean. Um, so let me let me interject on there. So two things. So take into consideration, I mean, they don't have to be, like, necessarily out in the ocean, ocean but you could be underwater if they use, um, I, I guess we'll see what technology they use in this particular house, but what about if they use the technology that they're using in the new uh, Jurassic World ride where you're inside of the tank with that, I forget the name of the dinosaur, but you know what I'm talking about, like the big gator yeah. thing. Imagine if they use that for, like, a Jaws house, and you walk through kind of like an underwater maze. That'd be pretty cool. I could see them uh, using that kind of technology if they are willing to invest the money into it. Um, that'd yeah, be really that'd cool. be a lot. <laughs> yeah, that would be a lot because, uh, of course, when you when you invest money into an attraction that's going to be there for probably the next 20 years, I mean, they're going to put the money into it. But if you're going to invest into an attraction that's only going to be there for like a month or two, I don't think they'll put that much money. Unless they want to keep reusing that exact same uh, effect every year, then it's a good investment for the next coming years. But – as far as if they're just going to use it for like two months, I don't think they would be willing to put the investment money into it. But um, that that sounds like a cool thing. It, it, it sounds uh, a little reminiscent to what we had over here last year at Not Scary Farm called a maze called the Depths, and it was mostly just about, uh, of course, like um, a bunch of creatures and stuff roaming around the maze and stuff. And it was cool. You got to go into like uh, Davy Jones's uh, the ship and stuff like that, and you got to see these like. Uh, mutated sharks and just the effects for that maze was really cool especially for a maze at not scary farm that's uh that's doing a lot for them and i i was one of probably one of my favorite mazes of the event last year so i'm excited to see at your coast your end what they bring to life um within that maze as far as sea creatures go as far as maybe myth of sea creatures um it'd be cool to see what they bring to life because I, i'm a huge fan of like stuff like that like when you see like really cool sea creatures it's 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 badass yeah no, it's it's a really good announcement for for the the um, original concept side, you know. Following up uh, Blood Pit, that sounds like a real solid house to to explore. But the next house, again, another original concept house, was um, was announced during the time that we've been away, and probably uh, for me, I think this is going to be the house that's going to steal the show, um, which is uh, the terror of the yukon the yeti that right there just the description just the the fact that it's like a you know a snow bigfoot um yeti that i don't know why that have you ever watched uh finding bigfoot (laughs) i've seen the i mean i've seen a lot of bigfoot things i mean but yeah i've i've seen finding bigfoot yeah that that show i always found it like really interesting and even though you never saw anything i was always interested so I think I'm a little biased on this one, but at the same time, 
um, this and Blood Pit are basically turning the event around back to a more adult uh, base event with more blood, um, just more actual what seems to be more of a terrifying house to experience. We'll see. All you need is three words to describe this maze: a fucking yeti. That's all you need. <laughs> I mean, you already you already have me sold with that. It's like uh, if you're gonna have a yeti jumping out everywhere, killing people and scaring you throughout the thing. I'm ex I'm personally excited to see this uh, maze because I want to see what the yeti actually looks like, um, and I want to see more of the story behind it. Are they exploring like a mountain and this yeti's on it, or what, what, what's the you know really the story behind it or anything? Or um, I, I just know that it was inspired by like the slaughter cinema houses. Um, I believe there was Swamp Yeti inside of the Slaughter Cinema House last year that we had. So it was inspired by that. Um, just the, the fact that it's going to be a snow house with a bunch of Yetis. That's another thing. I love houses that involve, like, weather, um, you know, rain. Last year we had Poltergeist, which had rain. In the past we've had Krampus that had snow when you're walking through it. It's just a cool, immersive, like, feature when they add weather into the the mazes definitely i felt that too when we went in stranger things for of course the um upside down scene it felt really cold and stuff in there and i felt that that really brought the upside down to life um but they've done that of course in, in various other mazes that we've had uh again like poltergeist there was um some awesome water and wind effects in there which i thought were really cool it really brought the whole kind of aspect of the movie to life um there's been one, I think last one year in Ash vs. Evil Dead, they, they actually were spraying blood at you. Same with uh, the first Purge. Like when they would kill someone, like blood was supposed to be sprayed at you, but of course it was probably like water or something. But uh, yeah. it's, it's a cool feature when, when mazes bring stuff like that to life. And I'm, yeah, I'm really they, looking forward to seeing these two mazes, what they involve and stuff like that. Yeah. No, no. They, these, the, from a original concept perspective, uh, I'm loving what Orlando's offering. Uh, but back to that that water effect of like getting cut and blood like squirting, they used it over in Orlando for Terminus one year, for the Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's it's cool. Whenever they they involve that kind of uh, effect into any house, it's it's always something that I welcome. Definitely, definitely. All right, well that that looks like that they're gonna be really good mazes, and I can't wait to see footage of them. Can't wait to see uh, hear people talk about them, review them. So. Let's move on to our last bit of news, which is going to take our place over in Hollywood. Uh, we got all of our scare zones announced while we were on the hiatus as well. Um, and that uh, is where I'm going to take over for the rest of the show. And I'm going to talk about it, and I'm going to hear what Eddie thinks about them. So we're going to start them down, uh, of course, with Fallen Angels, which is going to take place in the f uh, New York Street area. That's going to be the first scare zone right when you walk into the park. Um, this one looks kind of reminiscent for me, at least, uh, to... I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Doctor Who, but there's a, uh, like these there's like these villains in Doctor Who where like if you blink or something they come and stuff like that and they like get closer and closer, but they're statues uh, and they look pretty evil. They're one of the like one of the main villains of the show and stuff like that. But like the more you close your eyes, the more you like the closer they get to you, or they'll, they'll just end up killing you and stuff like that. So um, it kind of has reminiscence to that in my opinion. Um, but I, I do like the design of the costumes and stuff like that, and I think they look really cool. Um, nice. The next one, of course, is going to be Spirits and Demons of the East, and it's going to be the second half of New York Street, and that's going to take place right in front of uh, the Universal um, Parisian Courtyard. And that's going to be actually where the opening ceremony will take place. So uh, Spirits and Demons of the East will be the opening ceremony this year. Um, I'm kind of excited to see this one. This one's a more uh, a Chinese, Japanese-based culture uh, scare zone. Um, it's supposed to take it, the the story behind it is a bunch of artifacts and stuff uh, that people got their hands on them and they got let loose and they're like of course cursed and stuff like that so you're gonna see a lot of like Chinese and Japanese artifacts just running around and stuff like that which I think it'll be pretty cool um, usually this scare zone is where they of course have a lot of chainsaw people and stilt walkers so I'm, I'm excited to see what they bring to the event for that one uh, Exiting Holidays in Hell, um, you're going to come to a scare zone called Christmas in Hell, which will be officially actually part of the maze. It's going to be on French Street, uh, where Parisian Courtyard uh, uh, kind of goes back to. It's going to end near the animal actors and stuff like that. So all that French Street is going to be Christmas in Hell, and that's going to be the ending to, like I said, Holidays in Hell. And that, of course, is going to be um, – you're going to see, of course, Krampus and stuff like that. And it's going to end, of course, with the uh, New Year's baby that they've been talking about. Um, so it's gonna go full reminiscent. You're gonna see all the. You're supposed to see all the holidays in here, how sinister they are and stuff like that. So 
kind of excited to see this as a maze. This was an amazing scare zone last year, and I want to see what they can do as a maze this year uh, with the, hopefully a bigger budget on it. And there's supposed to be a lot of cool effects that they used in Universal Monsters last year that they're bringing over to, of course, Holidays in Hell. One of those effects I'm talking about is when at the very end you see Frankenstein's monster and Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein. They're all in his laboratory, and they're working on it, and Frankenstein's monster pulls the switch, and he blows up the whole... Um, he blows up the whole laboratory, and it was such a cool effect that uh, they're going to introduce something similar to that in the 4th of July section of Holidays in Hell, where, of course, this kid is playing with fireworks, and I guess he blows, like, his limbs off or something like that. Uh, I'm very excited to see how they're going to introduce this into, like, a firework factory. It should be pretty cool. Um, Toxic Tunnel is returning again, I think, for its, like, third or fourth year, but of I think it's its third year because it's got three X's in the tunnel or in the toxic part. Uh, that is, of course, the tunnel that takes you to the back lot, Metro Sets, uh, mazes. So you got a little uh, scare zone there. Um, and last year, it, w it was a very good scare zone. Th those guys in the tunnel, they get down on that uh, scare zone. They they go back and forth. So there's like a thing in the middle that separates. So there's one going, there's one way going towards the Metro Sets, one way coming back to the park. And they go back and forth, jump between the ropes and stuff to scare people. They do an amazing job in that tunnel. So I'm excited to see that return. And, of course, the last uh, scare zone that we have that is going to be in the Metro sets that takes you to those mazes in the Metro sets is All Hallows' Eve. It's going to be taking place. It's supposed to be like a Mexican folktale of some sort where they're going to, you know, more like a Dia de los Mortos kind of vibe in a way. But um, you're going to see, of course, probably a lot of, like, Mexican folktale, maybe like La Llorona and stuff like that. I have no, I have no idea. They released some concept art of what we're going to potentially be seeing, some, some of the costumes and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, and the last thing I actually want to talk about uh, before we uh, end the, of course, scare zone part is there's a possible added scare zone that's going to be in the lower lot. Now, back in 2012, they used to do a lower lot where, of course, Transformers, Jurassic World, and the Mummy are. That whole area, they used to do a scare zone there. Now, they took it away for, I think, maybe budget purposes, but there used to be a scare zone there. And there's there's rumor that, sh uh, there's rumor that this year that they actually might be including that. Um, last year, there was these things. There was these... Uh, People that were dressed up, they weren't any particular scare zone or anything. They were just dressed up. I thought they looked pretty cool, but uh, John Murdy said he dressed these guys up as like a test for next year. Um, and they were just kind of walking around the park and stuff like that. Like I said, they weren't themed to any area. They were just, they were wearing hoodies. They had masks. They kind of looked like they were from the Purge, and they, they were holding chainsaws and stuff like that. They had these like uh, hoodie vests on and stuff like that. They just looked really badass. So there's rumor that either that's going to go down in the Metro sets because they said there's going to be people like that just roam in the park or there's a rumor killer clowns from outer space uh, scare zone down there which i would much rather prefer but uh who knows uh, at this point so that's going to do it for all the scare zones this year eddie uh what are your thoughts on what we've talked about for those um i mean it, it sounds like some cool things coming to your event man it sounds like a lot of holiday theme type of thing so you guys kind of have like a theme of the 80s and holidays going on um uh, i'm interested to see the walkthroughs through these scare zones um of course toxic tunnel i've already seen several times but it, it does look like a really cool uh kind of like walkthrough and I, it does seem like like you said the the actors there actually take it take their job really seriously they have a lot of pride behind it definitely definitely all right all right eddie so we've covered everything let's do a quick recap of what we covered today uh ghostbusters coming to both orlando and hollywood this year uh recently announced um uh, to come, I guess, to both uh, mazes. We talked about what we want to see in each one of them um, and stuff like that. This year at Orlando, we've got, um, what was it? The uh, the uh, Depths of Fear and uh, Swamp Yeti. Or, sorry, not Swamp Yeti. Uh, <laughs> Yeti, Terror of the Yukon. Terror of the Yukon. Okay, and we have those two mazes coming, two original mazes for Orlando. Look, sound, look and sound amazing. Um, and then, of course, we have all of our scare zones coming in Hollywood, which is a quick recap. Fallen Angels, Spirits and Demons of the East, Christmas in Hell, Toxic Tunnel, All Hallows' Eve, and a possible added scare zone in the lower lot or just a possible uh, roamers around the park. Um, that is going to do it for another episode of East vs. West. Uh, announcement season should be coming around pretty and fairly soon. Um, and, of course, we're going to do our annual – or it's going to be the – it's going to be about one year since we started East vs. West, so I'm, I'm pretty excited for that. Um, yeah. But we should – we're going to – we do this thing every year. We're going to start doing this thing every year where we, of course, after we go to the event, we're going to break it down as to what we thought of each one of our events. So stay tuned for that in around, like, September, October when we uh, go a couple times to kind of get a feel for what we think of the event. Um, also be aware we're going to be talking about probably uh, pretty soon 
Um, I know Bush Gardens has been announcing a lot of stuff lately. So I want to get on that as far as with Bush Gardens versus Not Scary Farm. So we're going to be talking about that pretty soon. So stay tuned. Uh, and also stay tuned for more Halloween Horror Nights updates because we will fill you in of what we think about them for each coast. There's no other show like this on YouTube, guys. So take advantage of a show like this because uh, when we came up with the idea for this, uh, we didn't know if it was going to take off. And you guys have been really responding well to it. And we'd like to thank you for that. Uh, give a, a big round of applause for my uh, co-host, Eddie, for coming back on. Um, and go subscribe to his channel, uh, Eddie Tamet, on YouTube. And go follow him on social media. Um, definitely want to check that out. Thanks, man. Appreciate nope. it. And, of course, everybody go subscribe to the Knights of Horror. This guy's putting out consistent content and quality stuff. And the closer we get to the event, the more interesting these things will, will get as well. And I should uh, just end it with this uh, by an infamous quote of one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, and ask yourself, people, have you been entertained? <laughs> Thank you, guys, ladies and gentlemen, for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of East vs. West. Take care, guys.